when Grandpa and Grandma Barfield uh, moved to New Montgomery, they bought uh, some furniture and they bought the clock that was on the mantel. And as long as they both lived, they used the clock. And when Grandpa died, why, uh, uh, Jim, uh, Mama, got the clock and it stayed in mom and dad's house as long as they lived and when dad died why well, jim said he wanted the clock so it stayed there so later we learned that jim sold it to melton hickman and uh, so melton i kept it a while and uh, evelyn gordon decided that she wanted it because she thought that it was her grandpa, Grandpa Hickman's clock, you know. She didn't know that it was Grandpa Paul Barfield's. And so she uh, bought it from um, Melton Hickman. I don't know what she paid him for it. And, uh, $75. And uh, so she mm -hmm. still has it, and she won't part with it. Well, there was a wardrobe, a pretty uh, wardrobe to hang your clothes in. I remember that, too. And uh, that was there when mother and daddy both died and I don't know who got that but I know if Evelyn could have got that she would have gone for that too but I don't know who got it, it I don't suppose it's still in the house and uh, so that's the straight of that, that well you know when I was there um, the year before last um, and I saw the Duffies. The Duffies called her up and told her that I would really love to have that clock. And she said, no, she wouldn't sell it for anything. She'd never part with that yeah. clock. Yeah, so. she still has the clock. But anyway, she wrote me a nice letter and said that and she's the reason that Jessie Lee don't uh, write me very much and don't come out. Well, Jessie's husband lost one of his legs not too long ago, had to be amputated. And he has to stay in a, a wheelchair most of the time, and Jesse don't can't leave him very long at the time. So that's why I don't hear from Jesse Jesse Lee. And then the Lee's sold out in uh, Pennsylvania and moved to Winfield, close to the, her sisters. But she had one of her daughters with her, and the daughter didn't like Winfield. And they stayed there about a year, and she sold out there. And to please the daughter, she went back to Pennsylvania. I don't know whether Lisa's husband is still living or not. His name's Long. I've forgotten his first name. Oh, Aunt Vivian, uh, didn't you tell me that uh, at in a different, uh, you know, a distant way, we're we're related to the Long family, Huey yes, Long? Yes, we are. You see, Huey Long and. George and all that bunch of longs, they had such a bad name down there. Their they mother sure was Grandma Lyons' sister. On the Hickman side then, huh? Yeah. Maybe and that's how they got to be so goofy. <laughs> they called her Aunt Kate all the time, and George uh, had an, uh, it was a dentist, and he had an office in Tulsa. And uh, so one day, Laura was, uh, he had a house over in, um, a drum right that he wanted to sell or trade and so Laurel we had a house on 8th Street um, house almost as good as this house oh, it wasn't as good as this one but it was a nice house and uh, but we rented it out I couldn't get Laurel to ever move over there he liked to live on fifth place so uh, we decided to, it was much trouble to keep it and keep it ready people wanted this built and that built and a new sink and a new this and new that and it cost so much to keep it ready, we couldn't make much money off of it. So we decided to trade it or sell it. So uh, this was in the paper, this house over at Drumright. So the, his telephone number was there. So we were to call him, we wanted to see the house. So I, Laura told me to call that fella and see what kind of, well, let, let's go over in Drumright and see that house. I I wouldn't mind to have some property over in Drumright. And so I called him and it was George Long. And uh, so I didn't tell him who I, I told him who I was, but he didn't know that I was in Kenton. So he said he'd take us over on Sunday morning. So we went up to his office and got in his car with him, and he took us. I introduced my husband. And on the way over, why he says, um, uh, said, said something about, uh, he was from uh, Louisiana. I says, oh, I know all about Louisiana. I'm from Louisiana, too. And he said, uh, you are? I says, what was your name? I says, uh, Hickman. <laughs> 
And uh, so he says, do you mean, uh, says, uh, which Hickman and uh, made me give my uh, bird degree? And so I told him, and he says, well, we're cousins. I says, uh, well, I says, I guess we are. And uh, so we talked it all over and everything and found out that we were, he, he said his mother was Grandma Lyons' sister. Uh, so do you ever remember having seen Huey P? No, I don't remember seeing Huey P or any of the rest of them, George. It's the only one I saw their pictures in the paper. But I don't ever remember seeing any of them face to face. One that, that lived in Shreveport was a good lawyer. And Laurel, uh, my husband, my daddy, when he, they left their, their place on the Winfield Road, mm -hmm. why well, he got him to, uh, he borrowed some money on it. And he's hard up and borrowed money on the place, borrowed it for money. And so when he left, why well, he, uh, he left uh, that long and um, went in Freeport, turned it over to him to take care of. And uh, so uh, then when they, he stayed in Tulsa, but Dad didn't like it in Tulsa, so they stayed there a little while. And then decided to go back to Louisiana. So he went to Shreveport and got the rest of his money. I think this lawyer sold it for him, finished selling it and got the rest of the money. And he went by Shreveport and got the rest of his money. And he went on to, uh, uh, to Carfax, Louisiana, that's the county seat of Grant, of, uh, Grant Parish and found out that the Maxa Taylor place was vacant and for sale for its taxes. And he paid the taxes on it and got a deed to the Maxa Taylor place, took yeah. the rest of his money and bought lumber and built the house. And Do you remember how much the taxes were? It wasn't very much. I don't remember how much it was, but it wasn't very much. It wasn't, I don't think it was as much as a hundred dollars. So he got that 10 acres of land? for its taxes for since Max the Taylor had moved away. But do you remember how crazy Huey P. was? Oh yeah, he was a bad boy. Somebody said to me not long ago, said uh, uh, well, Huey P. wasn't a brother to the George and the rest of them. He was uh, by the younger one or something like that. And I said, they were all brothers, George and Huey. And, but this one that's up in Washington now isn't a brother to them. He's right. their, yeah. he's their, one of their sons. I don't know which one's son he is, but he's one of their sons. But yes, their dad uh, carried the mail from uh, Carfax to Winfield on horseback when he was a uh, young man. And they lived uh, uh, close to Win near Winfield, but not, it was pretty far away to walk to go to school. And dad picked up George and another one of them, I've forgotten his name, but it wasn't Huey on his horse and carried him to school in Winfield for as long as he finished carrying the mail for quite a while. Well, Aunt Vivian, do you remember whether Aunt Vivian told you the story about how the, when the railroad first went through Old Montgomery, yeah, New Montgomery? And, and they moved Old Montgomery to New Montgomery. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now, I've never seen Old Montgomery. Well, there wasn't much there, honey. It was, there was, uh, it was on the back of the river. And on the one side of the river, the side that we all lived on, was the school. And it was about as close to the bank of the river as from here to that garage over there, where that car sits. The steep bank, that river, it, the old, old Red River curves around like a snake. And then on the bank, on one side of the river, was one store, Williamson grocery store, and then dry goods store, and just a mixture. And on the other side of the river was Harrison store, on the side of the, uh, the other side of the river, which it was. And anyway, why, uh, on the side that the cemetery in New Montgomery is on now was a Harrison store. And the peop some people lived up the road there uh, toward where New Montgomery is, but there was a road went up that way. And some of the people, the two Lee, Miss Ann and Miss Blanche Lee lived there, and they were both been my Sunday school teachers. And there was a Baptist church and a Methodist church, but there weren't many Baptists around there. It was mostly Methodist. So we went to Sunday school, but I, we never did go in Old Montgomery. We never went to Sunday school till they built New Montgomery. And built that little Methodist and church. That built. little Methodist church is different than it used to be, too. Yeah. They've added on a lot to it, and they put a, a siding on it. Yeah. And it doesn't... Old Methodist there, and there's a few Catholics, 
the, Dr. Harris and Dr. Tom Harrison's family, they were the Payne girls. His family and Mr. John McCain's wife were Payne. They lived out across the Nantachi Creek out that way on the way to Winfield and Atlanta over there. And uh, they are, are Catholics and um, there was some of their, most of their children are Catholics. And Payne Harrison's Catholic. And and the Duffy's are Catholic. Yeah, the Duffy's are Catholic. Mr. Duffy was a Catholic. He was from um, uh, Wisconsin and he's a Catholic and the Duffy's are Catholic. And they made, I think they made Grandma Lyons a Catholic. She was a Methodist and they made her a Catholic before she died, I yeah. think. And uh, I saw him in Grandma Bill Hunter from A to Izzard. And a photographer came in there and this, did you know where that greenhouse set uh, 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 just out of Montgomery. You know where the school was? Well, right up there, this way, it was a greenhouse, and the Mr. <coughs> the uh, man that run the post office, Mr. Lee Thompson, lived there. Mabel and Wilma Thompson lived there. And um, so right out in front of that house, Grandpa Barfield built his big house over here. My father helped him build that house. And he had a big pasture and owned all that land. He owned a lot of land, brought a lot of land in there. And uh, the uh, photographer came there. I don't remember whether that photographer was from Shreveport or Alexander, but he was from one or the other. And put a small tent, a very small tent, about as big as that door and go over there, and this little square tent. And so he took pictures. It was a new new building up, and everybody was loading one of the trains through there. It, the railroad went through the LRN in 1900. And uh, they, uh, uh, everybody was, men were hauling in logs and lumber and loading it on the trains and everything and people were building houses and buying land and and it was just a really a stir, you know, in New Montgomery and they called it, uh, uh, called it New Montgomery for a while. It, uh, let's see, they had a name for it, I can't think of it now. Uh, and uh, so, uh, the dad decided Catherine was uh, going to be five years old in 1900 and uh, she was born in 1895 and dad said told mama that while that photographer was there we ought to have they ought to have their pictures made me and Catherine and Jim and Annie was a little baby she was born April 30th 1900 and but she was it was hot weather just like it's been here and it was just too hot to take her out and so dad he, they got through with the Grant Parish part of the railroad and the men in Grant Parish couldn't work in it further than it went down to Rapids Parish and down toward Alexandria and the men down there got to work to build the railroad. So uh, Dad uh, told Mama that if she'd get us ready that he would get his pay, get off from work um, at noon on Saturday. And if she'd have us all ready, why he, when he'd come home he'd eat a bite and he'd take us, Cad, Jim and me and have her picture made. Um, that, didn't you tell me that they paid him in gold? No, they not him. him. That was my first husband over at oh. Oklahoma City got paid in gold. No, he got paid in silver, Dad did. Silver. And uh, so uh, Dad uh, come home at noon. Mama had Cad and Jim and me all ready. Cad and Jim didn't have any shoes. I had a pair of shoes. They didn't have any. The sand was hot. It was awful. It's like it's been here. And so Dad picked up Jim and put him around his neck, put his legs around his neck. He had the first little pants and shirt that he had. That picture, you've got one of them, haven't you? Yes, I, I've got one and of them. I wouldn't take anything That That it's hanging on the wall. Right and he didn't take us down the Winfield Road. He said we would walk through that, go down the fence to what we call the Keys Pond, you know, get over the fence there. Well, there's a trail that would go to the railroad over there by Grandma Lyons' field fence, and it was cooler because it was shady. And so we did, but it, when we got to the railroad track, oh, there wasn't any shade. The trees over on the other side were too far back away from the railroad. But we walked on the ties all the way to town. He carried Jim up here. And they put it, the photographer put us in that little tent, just like you saw us, and took our picture. That picture was made the day, her birthday was on Friday. And this picture was made on Saturday, her birthday was 11th of August, and this picture was made the 12th day of August, 1900. I can swear to that, honey. I know that's true. I remember it like yesterday. And that picture was taken then. Well, Jim, 
uh, couldn't have been born in 1900, you know, and Joy claimed that Jim was born in 1900, and that was Annie that was born in 19, and later, that, uh, before Jim. And I said, well, this picture was made in 1900, and how come Jim looks like he's about three years old? And she says, well, uh, said, I, said, I think you're mistaken. She said, that picture wasn't made in 1900. I says, oh, yes, it was. It was the day after Catherine's birthday. We wanted to take it on her birthday, but Dad couldn't get it off on Friday. And uh, so that was taken on uh, the day after, on Saturday, the day after her birthday, the 12th of August, 1900. I can swear that, honey, I know it's true. And uh, so I was uh, uh, seven, wasn't quite seven. I'd been seven in November, and she was five that day. And Jim, on 13th of October, he would have been, been see, born seven, seven, 90, seven, 98, 99, 100, three, he'd have been three years old, and not probably, he wasn't quite three years old. Now that's the truth about that. I know I, I was there. And the Montgomery built up then, and people come in there, and people from out in the country, uh, a man, I've forgotten his name now, Tyson, Jim uh, Tyson, moved in from off a farm way out in the country and put in the store, and his two boys, Moral and Arnold, and little Lena went to school. And the school, they built the school, moved, they didn't move the school up there for two or three years, though. We had to go down to the old Montgomery school for two or three years. And uh, so finally why they built the school up there. And uh, we started going to school up there. I had Miss Cora McCain for my teacher. We had her down in old Montgomery, and she was a Catholic, but honey, she was a good teacher, real good, and real good to us, too. And so uh, they changed the name back then to Mitchum. They called it Mitchum at first because the man's name, you remember the thing about that? Yeah, uh -huh. Mitchum. Uh, the man that owned some, most of the land around his name was Mitchum. And they called it, when it was new, they called it Mitchum. And so some people said, it's still Montgomery. They said, let's do away with that. And it's still Montgomery, so let's make it Montgomery. So let's call it New Montgomery. So they called it New Montgomery for two or three years, and finally they dropped the new, and it's just Montgomery. Eight million. <coughs>